Hi everybody, uh, thanks for coming. This is Recovery Nutrition for Endurance Athletes. I am Chris and this is Michael. We are both registered dietitians and certified sports nutritionists from the Endurance Edge. We got 30 minutes to rock out some good information, so we're gonna jump right in. Uh, okay, so, come on. There we go. Okay, so we gotta start with, what the heck are we gonna talk yeah. about today? So objectives, what are we gonna talk about? So, you wanna yeah. jump in on this so one? Yeah, so we'll talk about first, really, why. Why is this important? Why does this matter? Why do you care? Um, and we'll do that by talking about the meta metabolic and physiological importance of getting adequate recovery. So like at, like, the cellular level and at a metabolic level, why do we care about recovery? Right, so if you don't know already uh, about us at the Endurance Edge, we are sort of like a dream place for endurance athletes. So we have coaching and nutrition services and metabolic testing and sweat testing. So we're heavy on the science here and being able to use that specific metabolic testing for you to be able to support um, the nutritional recommendations that we make. So we're gonna talk about that. Um, all right, so discuss the goals of recovery nutrition. What's the purpose? So right? why is it important? Why, how do we do it? Like what is the goal in doing it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, okay. Factors affecting recovery nutrition recommendations. Not all recovery nutrition recommendations are the same. Right, everybody's um, different. Everybody's mm -hmm. doing different activities and so you need to recover differently. Absolutely, okay. And then we're also gonna talk about timing. So, uh, big this is this is pretty big here so we want to make sure that you guys understand that the purpose of the timing and and those different kinds of things and lastly we're going to review, review some evidence-based um, potential supplements that can help with recovery all right so let's get in there you guys may or may not be able to see my hopefully you can see us but there we are all right so why does it matter why does recovery matter yeah so if you think about like working out and exercising in general um, it's really a tear down process. Mm -hmm. So the whole goal in working out is to stress the body, stress the muscles, and in the process we end up causing a little bit of microscopic damage. But what that does is tells our bodies like, hey, this is activity we might have to do. And so our body's like, let's go ahead and build up some muscle mm -hmm. and like put things in place so we can do this activity. And so the whole point is for it to be like a set of stairs. So we go a little past and then we, our bodies take a step up, right. and then we go to the next step, and our bodies step up. Yeah. Um, but for that to happen, we have to allow time for adequate repair and remodeling of tissue and stuff like that to get into the sciencey terms. But really, we cause a little bit of damage, and we have to make sure that, that damage is fully recovered so we can then perform at that level. Right. So you should be less fit at the end of a workout than you are at the beginning. Okay, so it's, it's all about overload. You have to overload your body more so than you have been accustomed to in the past. Um, you know, if you take somebody who's never run before and you try to throw them out and run a marathon right off the bat, it's gonna be totally disastrous. But if you gradually build up to that point, a little bit of overload, a little bit of overload rather than a large amount of overload. So that's the whole point is that recovery is all about, um, improving fitness is all about getting adequate recovery and, and overload so and all of these are important for like your long-term goals but it's also important from workout to workout we work with a lot of endurance athletes mm -hmm. and so a lot of it's like they're worried about their next workout the workout two days from now and so <clears throat> or they to, should be yeah mm -hmm. and so or the race in a few days and mm -hmm. so like if you look at all these factors when we exercise it causes that micro those microscopic tears to muscle which we have to rebuild it also causes a med a buildup of those metabolic byproducts so that's like acid and all these other byproducts that occur just like naturally through the workout process mm -hmm. but then we also deplete like the energy that we store in our muscles which is glycogen so that's how our body stores carbohydrates um, so we naturally like burn through those stores and so the point of recovery is to rebuild the glycogen stores clear out all the old metabolic byproducts and then to heal that microscopic damage so that we can hit our next workout like really well be really like healed and on point for it yes absolutely and uh i find this a lot in particular if you're out there and you're training for iron man or marathon or ultra endurance events um generally y'all are not recovered <laughs> so um everybody is different and i wish father time could you know not exist that would be amazing uh, because then we'd all be super fit and, and super fast but um you got to be patient with yourself and just know that um this is why we don't do like standard workouts for everybody or standard like training programs because everybody is so 
yeah. different. Everybody's things. starting in a different place. Everybody's been doing it for different amounts of time. Mm -hmm. If we took the same exact workout plan or same exact Ironman training plan and gave it to 100 different people, there'd be a bell curve, right? Some people would respond really well. Some people would do horribly, and kind of everybody in the middle would respond well too. So anyway, um, so just like Michael was saying, we want full repair and remodeling of that muscle damage. We want to flush out all the old waste um, and build up, build up, you know, basically be able to build ourselves back up. Um, and don't think of this necessarily as uh, a lot of people think that we keep lactate or lactic acid. Yeah. We, we don't, we flush that out very quickly. Yeah. Um, you know, we're just talking about things like, um, creatinine and things like that. So we want to most importantly replenish muscle glycogen. So, um, we've got a really interesting blog on our website. Well, I think it's interesting, but, um, <laughs> glycogen, <laughs> yeah, right, maybe. um, so glycogen is your body's stored version of energy and it is limited supply. Whereas, so when we do metabolic testing, that, that's the carbohydrates that we're testing in essence is your, is your, um, mostly your ability to use glycogen, but you also have fat. And as endurance athletes, we want to be stellar fat burners, like amazing fat burners, because we don't have to take anything extra to use that fat. Um, it's a very energy dense source. Um, so it, it's good that we're able to use that. But again, glycogen stores are in, are in short supply. We only store so much of them. So as an example, like average 150 pound male, if he's eating carbohydrates, not on a low carb restricted diet, probably has somewhere around 1500 calories worth of exercise. Um, and even if you carb load, it's like around 2000 calories right. that you can store. But even in like really lean athletes, like the 150 pound, like if you're a fairly lean endurance athlete, you can store 40,000 plus calories as fat. That's 40,000 calories. That's like lot. that's insane, right? That's so versus 2000, um, if you are a marathoner or, um, have ever been to a marathon or want to volunteer to marathon, hang out around mile 21, because that's generally when you hit that 1,500, 2,000 calorie mark, and that's when everybody starts to bump. So that's what we want to avoid. We want to keep those glycogen stores completely replenished. Okay, so we have a very specific system, and it also happens to be our meal service, but it's called the Fueling Edge. So we have four kind of R's of the Fueling Edge that we really want to push for people to, as, as reminders. Number one, Rehydrate. Woo! So we do that with fluid and electrolytes. Mm -hmm. Numero dos, which we just talked about a whole lot, restore glycogen. And in order to restore glycogen, we gotta have carbohydrates. Yep. We love carbs. Then we want to repair that muscle tissue. So again, going back to that microscopic damage, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we have protein so that we can repair and rebuild all that muscle. Yep, absolutely. And then this is kind of our additional feeling edge guy, uh, revitalize. So, um, you know, you could go have a burger and fries and beer, which I'm not saying that's a bad thing necessarily, or we could actually feed our, our bodies with good quality nutrition, good high antioxidant foods, because exercise is such an oxidative, um, uh, stressful situation. So we want to make sure... I used to always laugh at this one because Revitalize kind of comes out of nowhere, but it's like the other three are kind of like your like micro level. It's like we're looking at carbs, protein, fluid electrolytes. Those are like like finer level things, but then like a Revitalize hits it at like a more macro scale. It's like these are the things you need to be doing throughout the day to make sure that your body stays in good health, just like generally making sure you're getting enough vitamins and minerals and like your immune system stays in good shape. And like that's it's huge, like super important, but it's like not like that micro level, like this many grams of protein, you know, it's, yes. it's a much more broad, like this is a generally good idea. <laughs> right. Right. So then, so we want to also emphasize, and I think that's really pushing that point is that recovery and nutrition is not just in that 30 minutes, 30 minutes or even two hours, which we're going to talk about, um, post-workout, but it's all the time. You guys, this means like good quality nutrition all the time, because that is how you become a high performing athlete and a high performing human for, you know, quite frankly, is yeah. that how effective are you are, are you when you're sick? How effective are you when you're injured to your family, to your job, to your, you know, not yeah. just on your bike or, you're or sore when you're all the time. Yes. That is a problem if you guys are sore all the time. Okay. So recovery and nutrition varies. Tell us about this. Michael. So what and how much you should be eating of each of the macronutrients, so carbs, fat, protein, all depend on what you're what you're doing <laughs> for activity so if you're running if you're a runner an endurance athlete a triathlete is going to be different than if you're a power lifter 
or a CrossFit athlete, there's different like stressors on the body. So the type of recovery you're going to be doing is going to be different. Or from, since we're specifically addressing endurance athletes today, yeah. um, this makes me think of like, I got a five mile loop around my house that mm -hmm. I do on a regular basis. That is not overload. I'm used to it. I do it all the time. Yeah. I do it at the same pace. There's no overload happening no. there. No, the like, oh, just the usual. Yeah, just all right, same old, same old. But if I'm going to the track, or if I take that same five mile route and I'm doing some tempo work or some tempo intervals or um, you know speed work or I do a five mile time trial of that, that's a different story. You're more glycogen depleting in that than in just your standard like oh I do this hour bike ride all the time yeah. or whatever. So that that. And makes the recovery and nutrition less important. It's yeah. the more breakdown workouts and the more glycogen depleting workouts that are going to demand the recovery and nutrition. Particularly if you are if you're training like three times a week, y'all. I mean, you, this stuff's still important, but it's like <laughs> less less like of a stressor. Right. Yes. But if you're training five or more times a week, if you're doing double workouts. Um, Ironman training a really long workout, like then it becomes more critical. This stuff can't be ignored if you're doing it, especially if you're doing two a days. This cannot be ignored. Yeah, that's, that's critical if you're doing two a days. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so the type of training that you're doing. And then the volume intensity. So if you're doing really high volume training, again, different things are going to come into play with recovery, but also recovery is even more important. Mm -hmm. Same thing with intensity, like Chris talked about. If you're doing really high intensity stuff, that's more glycogen depleting, right. causes more damage to the muscle. It's going to be more important for this. Yes, absolutely. And then the time of your next workout. So in one of our blogs, we talked about this and like we had an example of it that I really liked. So it's like if you just did a hit workout and your next workout's in 12 hours, your recovery is going to be different than if you went and jogged three miles around the neighborhood mm -hmm. and your next workout's in five days. Yes. So. Yes, very different. Um, okay, so timing is everything, of course. So um, I, f I feel like this is a place where people kind of get a little co bit confused because they're like, well, I've heard 30 minutes and I've heard two hours. And so we're going to, we're going to um, kind of, you know, clarify all that. Two different pieces with the two-hour mark and the 30-minute mark. Um, so tell us, 30 to 45-minute window. Yeah, so 30 to 45-minute window after a workout is like a critical window where your body has just had a bunch of glycogen depleted. It's had the muscle damage and stuff, so it's pretty hungry for nutrients. Mm -hmm. You're so. three times more likely to take in those carbohydrates you take in in that post-workout period, three times more likely to store them as glycogen than you are to store them in your fat cells. Yep. So that 30 to 45 Bonus, minute window is where we like make the best use of and we're really efficient about the actual recovery process. Right. So if we can supply our bodies with those really good things, it puts them to really good use in that period. Outside of that period, some of it gets put to other things, like other uses like fat stores and stuff like that. Right. And so like to get the most bang for our buck, that 30, 45 minute window for recovery is, is pretty great. And key. keep in mind, like let yourself cool down a little bit, maybe, you know, change your clothes, maybe take a shower, um, depending on where you're at, what situation you're in, walk around a little bit, kind of, you know, let everything calm and quiet down. I had, I had one guy who told me that they handed him chocolate milk at like the end of a half marathon finish line and we're like drink this and so he drank it immediately and proceeded to vomit it everywhere let yourself cool down relax walk around a little bit you know cool off and then you can start thinking about yeah. um, that and something that's like knowing yourself some people could walk across the finish line and chug something and it's yes. fine yeah other yeah. people it's like it? if they're mm -hmm. like any if they're like in any temperature above like 75 degrees they can't eat or drink so right. like know yourself yes like, absolutely what you can handle yes um, and then protein, protein yep. is important. So, um, ideally at least 20 grams, you know, High plus or protein, minus, yeah. right? Plus or minus one. And by high quality, um, we're talking generally like whey protein if possible, because that's got a high amount of leucine, which is one of your most beneficial amino acids. Mm -hmm. Um, egg white protein is a good one. Uh, it doesn't have to be like a protein powder. We'll talk about that here in a second, but, um, but, uh, but yeah, that's, so that's, that's important, but you can also do um, a vegan protein, just make sure it's a mixture. And a lot of those will be supplemented with like your BCAAs and even leucine to yeah. make sure that it's like more of that like really high quality protein. Yes. And then we got some carbs and protein. Yep. Yep, we've seen, we've seen in the literature two to one, we've seen two and a half to one also yeah. being beneficial. Um, 
in for endurance exercise you've heard like i've heard four to one before yep. i know people so. come to me with you know a, a good default and i know that we don't have it necessarily written down a good default that you can uh that you can use is one gram of carbohydrates per kilogram of body weight so it's roughly your body weight divided by two and that's how many grams of carbs the only situation where i find that that's not quite so effective is if you're um overweight or obese you might have to cut that back yeah. a little bit because that then that's just kind of overload. Um, and let me also take note that, you know, again, we do our metabolic testing here. If we did the actual math and we do have a lot of engineers and people who literally like write out exactly how many calories they burn and how many are from fat, how many are from carbs. And that's a good thing. We want to see that. But at some point you should be fueling during your workout. If it's especially long, like if you're doing six hour bike rides and whatnot, you should be fueling during that time period. Um, but you know, you can't necessarily get it all back at once. Mm -hmm. That's not the intention. Yeah. The intention is that this is immediately replacing that glycogen, helping repair those muscles, just like we talked about in those four R's. And then the rest of your day is really critical. Okay. So let's, let's keep going. So 20 so grams carbs, do your doing math. basic math. Yeah. Two to one ratio. We can handle grams. that. Yep. Um, okay. So now the two hour window. Yep. What's that all about? So that one is where we, so we've gotten our little post-workout snack or whatever to kind of top up while we're like really just like super hungry for nutrients. Mm -hmm. So then two hours after, we're really wanting to get a more substantial meal, really want to make sure it's well-balanced. So we want to make sure we have powerful proteins. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that we've got those complex carbs, again, to kind of top up those glycogen stores, make sure we're replenishing those. And then we want healthy fats. You know, fats are important for a whole lot of different reasons. That's, I feel like, probably a whole other yeah. webinar, so we won't get too <laughs> into that. But fats are important. They help keep us full, do a lot of important things. So we do want to make sure that we're getting some fat. And, of course, hydration. hydration. Um, if you guys don't have our hydration guide, it is free. It's on our homepage. You can sign up and get that sucker right away. Um, it's got a little pee chart, a little urine chart on it, and it shows you where you are in terms of hydration levels. We have one in our bathroom. We have one at some local running stores. Yeah, like it should be. I can't tell you how many people have made jokes to me about like their pee color, but it's like those it's people, so were, those like people were not. Yeah, they yeah. were not thinking about their pee color before, and like so you know what? Even if people want to laugh about it, now you're worrying about that, hydration. That's right. We that's what we want to see. <laughs> jokes so, on you. So um, I will have to say that one of my favorite meals post-workout probably is a good old-fashioned burrito mm, yeah how about you yeah that one hits the spot for sure actually. it does so the beauty of uh of a burrito is we've got lots of carbs so we got beans and rice and uh for me it's a flour tortilla yeah. um and then you know usually i'll get maybe some chicken in it or yeah. some cheese or something like that maybe some salsa so we've got all that lycopene and, mm -hmm. and this, if you get you know, like spicy some sauteed veggies right there is actually research on beer as a recovery beverage y'all only one <laughs> because then we start tipping into the not so good recovery after that okay so just like we were talking about before timing is everything and daily nutrition matters yeah um so so we want well-balanced meals and snacks we want to eat frequently to keep our blood sugar in a good place but yeah. also you know i mean i think that's the other thing is this piece i know we've got a few minutes but um this piece is where like people worry a whole lot about like that post-workout window or, 30, or, 40, or during, yeah. well, what do I have for breakfast? What do I eat during my ride? Yeah. What do I eat afterwards? I'm like, well, what are you eating the rest of the day? Yeah. But people want to argue about like the time period of that like post-workout snack and like, Oh, well I've heard research that it's like two hours, but it's like, okay, you had your pre-workout snack an hour before mm -hmm. you did an hour workout. So it's like within that hour after your workout, you need another meal anyways, because yes. you shouldn't be eating every three to four hours. Right. And so it's like you're arguing about a time window that's if you're doing it properly and eating every three to four hours is a negligible window anyways. Yes. Yeah. So uh, we got holes to punch in everything. Yeah. So right? that one, that one's just like, it's like people want to argue about stuff for the sake of arguing, but it's like, make sure you're having a good pre-workout snack and then. So within, top off your glycogen. Yep. Yeah, 30 to 45 minutes after your workout, make sure you're getting a little snack. Yes. And then within two hours, have a meal. And then throughout the rest of the day, every three to four hours, eat well-balanced meals and snacks. So pairing foods together to make sure that we've got those complex carbs, lean proteins, right. high fats. antioxidant foods. Yep. Um, again, exercise veggies. is a oxidative, you know, mm -hmm. breakdown process. So, um, so yeah, just to reiterate that 30 minute window is the most effective window for replacing glycogen. So this is not, if you are also doing strength training, like you have not 
necessarily burned a whole quantity of extra of you know um, glycogen or carbohydrates, but the two hour window is more about making sure that you've got that protein in. So you know, make sure you got the combination of the glycogen and the or the carbs and the protein in that thirty minute window, and then regular old meal. Um, okay, and then of course hydrate. General rule, and I switch this a little bit. But make sure you're at least getting 64 ounces a day. That we know that that's a minimum of the average losses per for a woman. If you're sweating, and if you're sweating a lot, we test that too here. You need to get at least uh, at least that, if not more, and 100 ounces a day for for men um, or more. Again, check your pee. That's the best way. Yeah. So um, the goal is light yellow, not necessarily uh, clear. And if you're taking like a B complex or maybe a multivitamin that has a lot of B. May have to use something else to moderate yes. hydration status. It's gonna be a little uh, fluorescent. Yeah. So um, supplements. Right. Yeah, you fun. Everybody wants the magic pill, y'all. Um, okay. If you were here a couple of weeks ago, and we do have another blog we'll on this one, tomorrow, right? we'll be posting it to YouTube tomorrow. Um, creatine. Uh, we are both huge fans of creatine, um, in particular for my master's athletes. Mm -hmm. um, so and vegetarians and vegans. Mm -hmm. um, creatine is amazing. So we want to, especially as endurance athletes, and as we're getting closer to a race, an Ironman, marathon, etc. Generally speaking, you're going to be losing lean mass. We want to keep that lean mass. So um, creatine is one of those things that it's not just a one and done thing. You have to take it consistently because mm -hmm. it takes you about three weeks to build it up, and opposite three weeks to to flush it out. So yes. creatine. Anything you want to say about protein powders? We mentioned these a, a little bit before. No, I mean, you kind of said, you know, you don't have to do protein powders. You can get protein. It's a convenience thing, yeah, guys. And it's, but it's totally a convenience thing. Like, it's a lot easier to carry your shaker cup with protein powder in mm -hmm. it to have after your workout yes. than it is to carry, like, a cooler with your chicken yeah. and find a microwave, you know? And it's just, yeah. So that's why uh, with our meal service, we have post-workout shakes that we designed as such they're all whole foods powders so that you just have your shaker cup and then whatever liquid you want plus the nice thing about protein powders is you can slip protein into foods that wouldn't otherwise be high protein like oats yes not particularly high protein on their own but <laughs> dump some protein powder in there and, and you have the benefits of oats and yes. the benefits of protein yes <laughs> and i will say that there is there i get this question on a lot like oh i can only absorb 20 grams of protein an hour i'm like who yeah. told you that yeah. Like, where are you getting that information? I mean, you do need to space it out evenly throughout the day. Yeah, it's like the, uh, you hear wild numbers that people say. Uh, yeah, I'm like, yeah. Um, okay, milk. I, I'm sure you guys have heard the whole Got Milk campaign and the whole chocolate milk recovery thing. I mean, you know, milk is fine it's if you delicious. can. If you're not lactose intolerant, although there are a lot of uh, like Fairlife, for example, is a brand that we like. Um, not Michael, but yeah. not a dairy drinker. But a lot of people are in his situation where they're either lactose intolerant or they just can't do dairy in general. Um, but milk is well researched because it's got carbohydrates, because it has fat. Um, and some people think it happens to be delicious when you add chocolate to it, which is additional sugars. Thus, the, you know, so we've got some more information and there's tons of research on that. Dairy Council kind of has a lot of money. So, um, We've also seen research on cherries, blueberries, and pomegranate. It's not necessarily a supplement, but you can supplement yeah, like with these. You can do tart cherry juices. Ta da! Yeah. It's like I knew what we were doing. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, this is one that you kind of, it's kind of like the protein mm -hmm. idea, you know? It's like it comes from a real food, but you're like isolating it down to this one component that's like particularly helpful. Yes. Um, so, that's the same idea with like cherries. Like, I mean, if you like eating cherries, that's awesome. But like the tart cherry juice does help with recovery, helps with reducing inflammation. Mm -hmm. So like you think of like that post-exercise soreness, like the DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness, right. helps with that. Yes. This is a really great one to do before bed. We have a whole separate vlog on this, and I'll make sure that if you're on YouTube, I'll put it down below. Um, if you're watching the webinar, I'll make sure to email you guys this link. Um, but there is some great research on how it uh, improves the release of melatonin. So I wouldn't necessarily do that immediately after exercise. Not that there's anything wrong with it. It's a great source of carbohydrates. Awesome. High in antioxidants. Um, so, but it also aids sleep. The particular research study that this is referencing um, was done on downhill running, which is extremely um, hard on your body. Yes. Um, other things, I put a little link in here. I know you guys probably aren't going to click on that, but just so you know that there is some good research on turmeric, aka curcumin, 
Um, there is a little thing called BioCream too, it's the active ingredient in black pepper, which makes it 2,000 times more absorbable. Great for anti-inflammatory effects. Again, some, some of these supplements have either neutral effects, some of them have positive effects. Um, like we don't really say any, we don't suggest anything that has negative effects. No, so yeah. It's Good worth point. a worth, worth a shot. <laughs> yes. Even if like, um, it's, it's not, not cheap. cheap. I will yeah. say that because the minimum dose, the ideal dose is about 500 milligrams. And actually for our fueling edge um, meal service, we have a recovery smoothie that's called the golden shake. And that is a full dose with bioprene of curcumin. That sucker, I mean, you've got to be, it's punch in the face of turmeric, but like it's literally like a supplement and a post-workout smoothie all in, all one. in one. And yeah, it's orange. <laughs> It will stain your clothes. <laughs> um, and fish oil is another one. We're going to go into a whole another separate um, uh, webinar on this. So, but make sure if you are getting a fish oil, um, we test actually for Omega Check here to actually see how much you need and what your balance is of Omega Threes and Omega Sixes. But get a good quality one. It should not stink. You have to keep it in the fridge. It should be triglyceride form. Um, the research we've seen has shown anywhere from two grams, even three and four grams, up to even five and six grams per day. Most people are like, oh, I take a fish oil. I'm like, uh, you just took 300 milligrams. So not to say that that's a bad thing, but like, let's get a more effective dose in there. So that could potentially be, um, beneficial. And I would recommend doing that in the post-workout period mm -hmm. too. Um, so lots of different options there. Uh, how much you want to spend is all those all all those things. Okay, so we're getting close to time. So make sure you get your sleep. I mean, sleep is crucial. I know this isn't recovery nutrition, but this is what allows all that nutrition to go to work for you. So I like how you said that. Happens. That's good. <laughs> sleep deprivation has been linked to increase in cortisol, which is a stress hormone, which uh, impairs a lot of the recovery stuff. Absolutely. So yep. sleep deprivation also impairs our glycogen production. So you know, not sleeping well after hard exercise keeps us from fully replenishing that glycogen. Yeah. And before races keeps us from laying down all that glycogen that we're going to need during that race. So yep. like sleep crucial. Yes. The other piece of that during sleep, we release growth hormone, which is super important for muscle building and repair. So if we have really poor sleep, have not enough sleep, we're not really getting enough of that growth hormone and not getting full build of muscle or repair of muscle. Um, so just not maximizing that period where we could be getting a lot of benefit. Yes, absolutely. Cool. So if you guys still need help with nutrition, we are here to help. So both Michael and I, we've got another dietitian on staff. We're happy to help. So you can always book a free discovery session with us and we can talk about what's going to be the best um, strategy for you based on what you're training for, um, what you're trying to accomplish, how often are you training, et cetera, et cetera, and give you very, very specific uh, recommendations on recovery nutrition and daily nutrition and all those other things. Supplements. Yeah. So uh, if you do metabolic testing, you're likely going to have it done here with Michael. Um, and you guys can nerd out all you want on yeah. how many, <laughs> on how much, on how much glycogen you've used, on how much fat you're burning at every different intensity. You know, um, when I used to do the testing, I used to like to tell people, okay, right now you're burning 50% from fat, 50% from carbs. Sometimes they'd be like, I don't know what that means. How do I know, fix that? I know, <laughs> like, is that good? I don't know, but we can tell you about all that stuff. Um, and then obviously I was, I was referring to our Fueling Edge meal service. Um, we have a great meal service that's just for athletes. If you haven't heard about it already, and we do have, you know, some incredibly healthy food. That's the whole point: is that we're giving you very specific proteins, very specific vegetables, based on their antioxidant capacity, based on how powerful they are, and, and what they can do for you yeah, as I mean, a human. I think so. the whole point of the meal service was kind of connecting all the dots. You know, like so we talk to people about all the stuff that you need to be doing, and sometimes the the barrier there is then implementing that cooking it yes um and like putting it into play so we kind of filled in that gap as well so if you are having issues with putting this stuff into play hey maybe consider the feeling edge meal service yeah absolutely um, and it's all perfectly portioned for you i mean what it's amazing all right so cynthia has a question how does use of customized sports drinks like the infinite um play into recovery factor so um we do uh specific um, customized infinite um, drinks for people. Infinite is a sports drink company. Um, so if you are fueling appropriately, so being able to replace that glycogen as you are depleting it, so that's great. So that will help you out. You can continue to drink that mm -hmm. in that post-workout period if you know, like let's say you continue to sip on that for that 
first 30 minutes just continuing to hydrate and get um, carbs and you know that you're going to go home and say within an hour you're going to sit down to a meal, recovery, check. Yeah. Um, and I would also say, kind of going back to the point we talked about, like one of the things that happens during activity is we deplete glycogen. So if you're taking in like outside carbohydrates and like you know how much you're burning, you're replacing properly or yeah. minimizing the amount of glycogen that would break down, making that recovery process just a little bit easier. Yes, absolutely. Um, and then Jason has a question. Any re recommendation based on type or brand of creatine? Of course. I mean, that's what we do here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, okay, yeah, so every time, the, yeah, because I think that this happened to you, and so yeah, Michael was an intern for us for many years, yeah. and we used to Experience get, <laughs> he was like our guinea pig. Yeah, um, so, we'll talk about the analogy another time. Yeah, yes, yes. Um, so, uh, so that's a, common, that's a common side effect, yes. because when you store creatine, you also tend to store a lot of water. Mm -hmm. So this is actually, Jason, you may, have not seen it, but we're putting out tomorrow the creatine mm -hmm. webinar on yep. YouTube. Check our yep. YouTube channel because I talk about this in there. Um, so you do store extra water with that creatine, so you sometimes feel bloated. But there has been some research, that especially in endurance athletes, it's actually like useful water that we're storing. It's not just feeling bloated. We're actually essentially creating better hydration mm -hmm. when we do that. And so mm -hmm. it may actually be beneficial and help kind of deter dehydration. And to avoid kind of the bloated feeling, I would not do a load phase. Yeah. Uh, so loading is not necessary. Mm -hmm. um, you can do it if you want. Um, really the only time we recommend loading is if you need your creatine stores to be up in a pretty short period of time. Right, like if you're, but that's not really applicable to, a, to an endurance yeah. athlete. At, at all so yeah. that's a whole nother uh, strength discussion yeah um so yeah just make sure you're doing um in combination with carbohydrates and protein doing that creatine so um i mean i've mixed it in my oatmeal i've put it in a smoothie you can also do it pill form if that's easier like orange juice. yeah i mean it's like whatever way that juice, like, <laughs> i've put it in water before yeah. and then in addition yeah. to a meal yeah, yeah it's pretty it's but it's tasteless so anyway Hopefully all of this has been useful. Um, be sure to get out there and keep working hard and take care of yourself, get your rest, get your good nutrition. Let us know if you guys have questions. We wanna know what you guys want to. Um, see if there's any other questions. I think we're, I know if it was in the chat. We can also uh, I'll share, but um, thank you guys so much for coming. This is awesome. So again, I'm Chris and this is Michael and we're from the Endurance Edge and we want you guys to keep being awesome. So thanks for watching and we'll catch you next week.